Good morning, First Baptist Church Aztec. I'm Jarrell, and I'm so glad you decided to spend your Sunday morning with us. We're so excited for worship and to dive into some powerful teaching. If you're a guest with us here today, know that we are so glad to see you here. After service, Will would like to meet with you in the First Cafe area, and there you will also receive your favorite soda and the candy bar. If you're looking for a church home, you have found a great place. Now, before we get started, here is a look at some of the things that are happening at First Aztec. This Tuesday from 5.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., we will have our Tuesday time of prayer here in the worship center. Join us, even if it's for a few minutes, as we seek the Father for a spiritual awakening in our region. Floyd Fouts will be holding a concealed carry permit class on Friday, October 23rd from 4 to 6 p.m., and on Saturday, October 24th, from 9 to 3 o'clock p.m. The cost is $80, and you will need ammunition. Talk to Sue in the office to sign up. The next quarterly business meeting will be on Sunday the 25th at 4 o'clock p.m. During this meeting, we will vote on the 2021 budget. The proposed budget is available in the First Cafe area, and the finance team will be discussing it in Sunday school classes throughout this month. Hey everybody, we're here to talk to you about Fall Fest 2020. Fall Fest 2020? 2020 isn't the same anymore. 2020 is definitely not the same, but the church is the same. So we're gonna invite our community to come down and do a drive-through trunk or treat with us. All you have to do is commit to be here with your vehicle. We're gonna decorate them, either the trunk or open the back if you have an SUV. If you need help finding a Bible-themed decoration kit, I can help you with that. It's gonna be awesome. I can't wait. I can't either. We're gonna have food too. There's gonna be food? Yeah. When they leave the parking lot, we're gonna hand them a hot dog and a bag of chips and tell them thank you for coming. So we need you guys to commit to help us out. You know what else we could do? What? We could have a masquerade. Masks. Let's do masks. I have a bedazzled mask. I just have a black mask, but it goes with my kitty cat ears. You could be a kitty cat. What are you? I'm a drummer. Rattle! Rattle. You know what else you could be? You could be a skunk. Pew! You could be Zorro! America! NASCAR fan! La lady with purple hair! Yep. Lots of purple hair. Lots of purple hair. Masquerade. Masquerade! You could even come as a cowgirl or a cowboy, but don't come as a bank robber. You don't have to have a mask under this. Or this either! So would you sign up today? Would you commit to help us with Fall Fest? Help our community know that we are still here, that we still love them, and we want to serve them? We want to hear from you guys today, okay? We got some great ideas. It's from 4 to 5.30 p.m. on Saturday, October the 31st. Please join us. We are collecting items for Operation Christmas Child through the 8th of November. At 6.30 on the 11th of November, we will have our packing party. More information and a list of items can be found at firstaztec.org forward slash OCC. Contact Sarah Shockley if you have any questions. Thanks again for being here with us today. Make sure you stay connected with us throughout the week at firstaztec.org or on social media. We believe God has something to say to you today, and our hope is that you will feel His love stronger than ever before. You've picked a great day to be here, and welcome home.
Well, good morning, everybody. Our call to worship is going to be a little bit different this morning. We're going to start with a call to prayer. In the first service, we took some time and, and we prayed for the Lee family. So we're going to have an update because we got to talk to Gracie and see Gracie this morning. Brian? Okay, so we, um, we had a video call with Grace and Beth this morning in our Sunday school class and uh, kind of gave an update. Uh, Grace's pain was better last night. She was moved from Rust to the Presbyterian in Central last night in preparation for surgery today. Uh, Mom was not able to stay with her and so, you know, she she had to rely on God and she did and she said her pain was actually managed uh, better through the night than it has been. Um, as we were talking with her, she, uh, the doctor came in and so we were going to pray with her, uh, pray with them and we weren't able to because the doctor came in so they're like, hey, we got to go. They called us back and uh, when they called back, her uh, blood level counts, her white blood cell count was at 29, it was down to 20, uh, which was the the first positive move they've had with that. Um, so that was that was great there. And uh, the doctor said that they're going to do the procedure about 2 o'clock. And he really encouraged Grace with, hey, with you being young and you being healthy, it's, it's going to be a long road, but you're going to get you're going to get through this. Sorry, Sierra said I wasn't loud enough. Uh, she said she just encouraged them. And I, I know Grace was very uplifted. Her attitude was was unbelievable it was it was really really great uh the attitude of both of them that when we talked to them it was awesome and they feel the prayer so keep praying so we're going to pray this morning jeremiah daniel if you come iola watson because like the doctor said she is young but it's going to be it's going to be a road to recovery but you know what god can touch her body tomorrow and she could walk out of that hospital just fine so we're going to trust him for the work that he's doing right now Rick, sorry, not Watson. Please uh, pray with me. Father, first of all, we want to thank you for the good news. Uh, Father, we've been praying for our little sister Grace. Lord God, for her healing. Father, that you would just take this horrible infection away. Father, that you give uh, all of her doctors and caregivers, Father, a great wisdom. And Lord, that through all this, Father, they can witness for you. We thank you, Father, for the for the physical healing, for the physical strength. But Father, we also ask that you strengthen the faith. Father, for for, for for Will and for Beth and for Levi, Father, for for all of the, the Lee and the and the Lackey families, Father. They're they're all in this together. We're in this with them, Father. And we, we hear great things and we know that our prayers are being heard. And are, are, are being answered, Father. And so, through this, Lord God, let us let us worship you in a way, Father, that we honor and glorify you just as what you're doing for the, the for our, our little grace, Father, that you just are being glorified in order to do that. Too. Father, I ask this in Christ's name. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this day, Lord, this day to be worshiping you, to come together with like believers, Lord. God, I pray for the Lee family that you just continue to be with them. Lord, they they feel your presence every day, Lord. God, I know that you are with them and that you will touch them, Lord. God, I pray that that with grace, Lord, that you just continue to continue to heal her, uh, be with her parents, her brother, Lord, as their uh, the stress that they have, Lord, that you just calm them, Lord, that you just pour your love upon them, Lord. God, I just thank you for all that you do for them. Here. Lord, I just come before you today, and I just want to lift up Grace, the Lee and the Lackey family. Lord, I just, we come before you acknowledging that you are the one true healer. Lord, you are all-powerful, and you know what you're doing. Lord, we pray that um, you would just bring a peace over them, 
so that they would know that whatever is going to happen, it's going to be in your control. Um, you know what you're doing. You have them in the palm of your hand, Lord. And we just come before you. We pray that you would just put your healing hands on Grace. And Lord, I just pray that you would be with her, lift her spirits. I know she's in very good spirits, but Lord, it can be tough. So we just pray that you would keep her spirits with you, Lord. Keep Beth's spirits with you, because I know as a mom it would be tough. Lord, I just pray that you just be with them. Give them all the peace, all the comfort that only you can give. And Lord, we just thank you for everything that you are and everything that you do for us. Lord God, she um, has endured a lot already, but Lord, you know that you never waste our sorrows. Your word says, for um, we know that in all things that you will always work them out for good. And, and Lord, so we thank you that you have the victory in this situation, Lord. It's already yours. Lord God, we anticipate seeing many, many wonderful things that will happen. And Father, I too pray that, Father, this won't have to be a long recovery, Lord. By your grace, in grace, we pray, Father, that this recovery, that you would raise her up quickly and that, Lord, her, her heart would be all toward you even more. That, Father, her testimony would go far and wide and that many would come to know you because of her faith, because of the faith of her family. Lord, we just thank you for them. Thank you for their, their faithfulness to you. And, Lord, I pray for Beth that you bring more healing in her body, Lord, that you would just strengthen her, strengthen Will, Levi. The grandparents, Lord, as a grandparent, I just... I pray for her grandparents, her great grandparents, Lord. They they love her so much, and they they are um, in need of our prayers and our encouragement. And Lord, right now, I want to take this opportunity as we pray for healing for grace. Lord, I ask that anybody that's hearing me right now would feel your healing touch. If they need a healing touch in in their uh, body or in a relationship or in mental areas. Lord, please, I just cry out for mercy on these things. And Lord, you know the needs, even among our family here, those that may be watching. Lord, bring your answers to those needs. And we just praise you, God. Thank you that you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, Lord God. Thank you for the doctors. And Lord, at 2 o'clock, we thank you for the miracles you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. So this morning, Will was supposed to be bringing the message this morning because our pastor stepped down to the southern part of New Mexico and is doing some ministering there. And Will is in Albuquerque, right where he should be. So this is Stephen Soto. Would you stand and, and say hi to everybody this morning, Stephen? Stephen got a phone call yesterday, and his answer was yes. So we want to thank him for coming. He comes from Emmanuel Baptist Church this morning. And also, while you're giving hand claps this morning, would you just give a hand clap to this team? Because as we were waging battle on behalf of Grace this weekend, God kind of took the worship service and he turned it upside down. And um, I sent this team a text at 6 o'clock this morning and said, guess what? <laughs> new game plan so and you know what they do what they always do they rise to the occasion and God equips them and, and we're going to worship um, I know that many of you when they got that text on Friday about our little grace 
there was a giant of fear, a giant of worry that stepped in and took hold of me for several hours that day. I was worried, worried about that sweet, precious girl that we all love so much. And I was reminded about 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 starts out, For although we live in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh. Since the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds, we demolish arguments and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive to obey Christ. And that song came to mind. I raise a hallelujah. You guys know that song? Amen. You know that sword that the giant of doubt and worry and fear raised about our girl. He'll regret ever raising that sword of her. Because that same sword that Goliath raised at David is the same sword that David took and took the giant's head off. Amen? So let's worship this morning, believing and knowing that we have a God in control and of power. And look at these worship girls. Here they come this morning. Let's raise the hallelujah this morning. I raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies, I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah, my weapon is.
there's something that happens when you start singing. It is hard to, to sing and worry kind of at the same time when you're worshiping the Lord. Am I right? This says, let praise be the weapon that silences that enemy. So let's continue to silence that enemy this morning. And don't back down on that praying. We're going to keep praying. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all that we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the judgment fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakers on our side. Forever lift him high. With the creation cry, God, we praise you. Whoa, we praise you. Oh, we're going to take it back to the first verse, Kyler, okay? Now that you guys have sang it, a little more familiarity, right? So sing it out. Here we go. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything.
to that truth. God, you are the God of angel armies. What, Father, do we need to fear? God, you hold us in the very palm of your hand. And the promise in your word is that we're held there in Jesus' hand, and your hand covers that hand, and nothing, nothing, Father, can take us out of your hand. Thank you for that promise today, God. And as we continue to worship you, claiming today, God, that you are the way maker, God, that you are the promise keeper. Father, that you are the light in the darkness. Lord, I pray that you would receive our worship this morning as a sweet aroma of incense to the throne. God, that you would continue to be God in the Lee family's life this morning. God, that we can continue to celebrate what you are doing. And God, as we will stand here again one day, and we will worship together hand in hand with that and with that sweet girl, and it will all be a testimony to your goodness. We pray it in Jesus' name.
this morning. Amen. Praise God. Man, even the girls are tough and ass to take. Wow. Thank you for coming this morning and, and just uh, worshiping and, and just, man, I just, the music and everything that, that's been said, all the testimonies, the prayers, it, it's just, 
you know, like I was saying earlier, it's, I don't know what more that I can say to what's already been said. It, it, God has spoken a message. I hope you've been paying attention. I hope that when you're singing these songs, it's not just you repeating words and just getting in a trance to where you're just, you're, you're spewing out verbally things. I hope you're paying attention to what's being said, the message that is coming out. And I hope you're, you're, what you're doing is you're taking your heart, you're wrestling with it, you're thinking about it, and, and it's, it's causing a reaction in you. Because that's what worship is. It's a response to who God is. God revealed, right? And so that's not the sermon, by the way. This is just extra. Um, but I, I just had to say that just because I mean, you guys, man, I love, I love the singing, the kids singing. Oh, man, it's beautiful. It's awesome. And, uh, you know, and, and speaking of kids and thinking of kids, and, and when I was getting ready this, uh, for this sermon, uh, you know, I was trying to, thinking about experiences in my life, and uh, because we're, we're talking about sickness and uh, it's just something that this that's we're talking about um, that's that's happening right now. Uh, I, I remember something about being sick when I was a kid. I, my mom had told me I had asthma, really bad as a child, uh, as a baby. And my mom said I was I was always sick. I was always in the hospital. Um, there was always a, a reason to be in the hospital. And I was just a sick baby, and, and I had asthma really bad. And, and I don't remember all that. And I'm, I'm better, praise God, and you'll figure that out by the length of the sermon that I'm, I can breathe again. Um, but, you know, it, I don't remember so much that. I do remember cough syrup, though. And I remember how gross cough syrup was. It was nasty. And every time I got sick, I, I mean, I, I didn't like being sick, but I remember just the cough syrup, and I just remember the struggle of getting cough syrup down. It was always difficult. It was always hard. And it didn't matter if it was cherry, watermelon, grape, if it was different colors, didn't matter because it was coming out anyways. But it was just it was just gross to me. It was it was hard to swallow cough medicine. And and you know, once you got it down, then everything was better. But it, but it just it was so hard to swallow. And looking at our time, just what's happening in our world, I mean I I doubt anybody would disagree with me that we're having a hard time swallowing a lot of things right now in our, in our society, in our world, right? Um there's a lot happening. There's a, there's a lot of bitterness, a lot of pain, a lot of brokenness. And so when, when things like this happen in our time as Christians, when things are going on like this in our culture, in our community, in our nation, in our world, because this is global, it's happening everywhere. It's not just Aztec, it's not Farmington, it's not the Four Corners, it's not New Mexico, it's not the United States, it's global what's happening, what's going on in our world right now. There's nobody around that is alive in this time, this day, that cannot complain about something. Or you can have some reason to grumble, some reason to be bitter, right? It's everywhere. And so because this is true, I want to look at the Word of God. I want, to, I want to filter all of that through Scripture. Because I think that's what we're supposed to do, right? As Christians, we don't look at what's happening. We don't look at how we feel. We don't do any of that. What we do is we take uh, these experiences and, and just our perspectives and we say, okay, what does God say? Not what do the uh, men say? Not what do I say? What does God say? And so this morning, as we get into this, I, I kind of want us to, to, I want you to filter all that. Take all that out. I know there's a lot going on. I know, um, especially with grace, I was just uh, talked, uh, you know, informed more about it. I walked into this situation and I, I knew somebody was sick. I knew somebody was having struggles. And then after the first service, somebody kind of gave me a little info. So I I, that's horrible, and it, it's a bad situation. It's, it's one of those situations that's definitely hard to swallow. But for right now, and, and not to make any less of that, but I want to take that situation, and I want to put it and filter it through God's Word, okay? And so that's what we're going to do. Let's look at Exodus 15. If you have your Bibles, open them up to Exodus 15. And we're going to start uh, in verse 11 through 18. What I want you to do is if you, when you find it, I want you to stand up. Uh, as, as, as reverence, as showing honors to the Word of God, because this is the Word of God. God is speaking to us, and so we're going to see what He has to say, and so we want to stand up and honor God's Word in that way. Exodus 15, 11 through 18, it says, Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? You stretch out your right hand, and the earth swallowed them. In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. The nations will hear and tremble. Anguish will grip the people of Philistia. The chiefs of Edom will be terrified. The leaders of Moab will be seized with trembling. The people of Canaan will melt away. Terror and dread will fall upon them. By the power of your arm, they will be still as a stone until your people pass by, O Lord. 
until the people you bought pass by. You will bring them in and plant them on the mountains of your inheritance, the place, O Lord, you made for your dwelling, the sanctuary, O Lord, your hands established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Amen. Let's, let's pray and we'll delve in to see what the Lord has to speak to this morning. Father God, I just I praise you and I thank you uh, this morning. Father, I, I come alongside worshipers. I come alongside uh, folks that are just here to, just to hear from you, to, to experience you, to know you, to seek you, to draw closer to you. Father, I, I join uh, alongside everyone here, Father, just to, to come and kneel down before you, Father, and listen. And so I would ask, Lord, that you open up our hearts, our minds, that you would filter away all the, all the negativity, all the, the bitterness, all, all the grumbling, anything in our life that's trying to distract us from, from who you are, Father. I would ask that you would just do a mighty work in my heart and everyone uh, that is present in their hearts as well, Father, that we would just might be able to hear your voice, Lord. Because we know you want to speak. You have something to say. And I would ask that you would just make that clear and powerful and clear. Father, just, just be with us, Father. Speak to us. And as always, Lord, may it always be your word, your truth that is spoken from my mouth. I'm just an instrument, Father. Uh, Lord, may the clearest thing always be your word. Never any opinion I have or anything else I say, but may it all be biblical truth based out of your word, something that you reveal to us in Scripture, Father. And help out always to be the focus, Lord. Thank you for what you're going to do. We ask that you move. That's awesome. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Thank you. You may be seated. I want to continue reading in our passage, um, and we're actually going to start uh, getting into our focal passages now. So uh, go to verses 22 through 24. It says, Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That's why this place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses saying, what are we to drink? So in the beginning of Exodus 15, what ends up happening is you have this song, right? We just read this song of praise. And see, what had just happened is God had delivered his people from the Egyptians. If you remember, uh, the Red Sea was parted, right? And so you just have this, these people cowering in fear in front of their enemies. And behind them is this big Red Sea and they don't see a way out. And so what ends up happening is Moses, uh, by God, God directs him uh, to lift his staff. And, and I'm thinking about Charlton Heston in the Ten Commandments. I don't know how many of you guys remember that. That was a good movie. It's, I don't know. They used to show it all the time. I don't know what happened. Anyways, point is, it was awesome. It, and it was, the, the scenes were awesome. And it was just, it was, it was really lifelike. They didn't have CGI, which is pretty impressive. Back then, they didn't have the, the graphics we do now but it was still impressive and I just remember seeing that and so they walked through right and nobody got hurt I mean they just walked through perfectly unharmed and then as soon as the Egyptians come down and they, they're riding their chariots and you have that music playing in the background all dramatic right and then boom the water comes over them and they're wiped out completely and God saves his people and man if you had experienced that in your life, if you had seen that, what would you do? You'd, you'd sing about it, and that's what the Israelites were doing. They were singing songs of praise. They were saying these truths about God, how he would keep them, how he loved them, how he had guided them, how he had saved them, and, and how he was bringing joy to their lives. It was a beautiful song. Their morale was high. They were so sure of who God was and what he was doing. I mean, they, they just couldn't continue that to sing about it. And we've been like that sometimes, right? In our lives. Where you just, you're just singing. zippity doo da, zippity a, Right? And the little birds come on your shoulder. Oh, wait, that just happens in the Disney movies, right? It doesn't happen in real life. Um, but we're just singing. It's going by great. And then somebody cuts you off in traffic. And there goes your day. There goes your song, right? Or you get in a fight at home in a, in a relationship trouble. Or something else bad happens and suddenly your song is gone. And just like that, their songs faded. As soon as life stopped going their way, it changed. But before we start beating up on Israel and, and just kind of judging them and saying, man, they're so stubborn, they're so dumb, why couldn't they see, right? I, I, I want to look at some of their circumstances. I, I want to give some explanation as to what is happening the first thing that Israel needed to remember, which they had forgotten, is that they were God's people. 
See, see, God had redeemed them and he had saved them for his purpose. They were under a promise and a covenant of God himself to rescue and protect them. They were special. They were unique. They were chosen by God out of all the peoples in all the earth, this small group of people. God said, those are mine. God did that. And they'd forgotten about it. They were also in Mara. I mean, they'd been following uh, Moses into the wilderness and, and they were just, they were going into the unknown. And some questions we have to ask ourselves, at least I did, is like, okay, so did God lead them here? Did God place them? Absolutely he did. God led them to Mara. He put them there. Uh, they, they were not uh, somewhere out of the will of God. They were in the will of God. God had placed them there. And sometimes that happens with us. God leads us into places sometimes that are unknown, that are scary, some places that are harsh, and God leads us there. We also need to remember that they had a legitimate need. They'd been traveling by foot. They had their possessions and their family in tow. They, they were in the, in the wilderness. It was like this long hike. And those of you who like hikes, wow. Like seriously, like if I get a day off, I want to sleep. But there's some people like, you know, they've been working all week and, and you give them a day off and they're just like, I'm going to wake up at six. I'm going to go walk five miles uphill. And that's fun to them. What's wrong with you? You need Jesus, right? <laughs> These guys weren't doing it for fun. They were doing it because they had to, because God had commanded them to. And, and they were running out of water. They ran out of water. And, and so you need water. And so there was nothing wrong with this desire to thirst. They, they needed water. And when they finally got to water, it was impossible to drink because it was bitter. And so there's that situation. And they, also, uh, they were also weren't far from home because they were insured. It says, if you wanted to back out now as an Israelite, if you're looking at this situation, you're saying, you know what? This is not cool. This is not fun. This is not something I want to do. This is not my future. I'm not going to do this. If you're an Israelite and you're thinking that in your head, now is the time to back out because you're not far from Israel. I mean, you could go back. You could be a slave. You could work really hard. But guess what? There's going to be food. There's going to be water. So if that, I mean, if, you're, if that's your, your form of thinking, go. Like, that's, that's what you had to do. So there was that temptation there. Like, man, you know what? We can just leave. You know, we can go back. And so that's what's happening in this situation. There are three days into this journey, and there's, there's so many questions and doubts and threats and fear, and it's getting really hard. And they're looking for relief. And when they find, I mean, something as simple as water, when they couldn't find it, imagine the frustration of that. And we can relate to that because hasn't 2020 just been just the hardest year? I mean, there's, it, just, it just keeps going too. I mean, and it's not just, like I said, it's happening all over the world, but personally, I mean, personally, it just seems like you can't catch a break. Like, you know, there's people that are losing jobs. There's people that are getting really sick and all the complications that come along with sickness because of the big sickness, right? And then there's, there's families that are breaking apart. And then you just add into that politics and just the unrest in our community and our society. It's just, what is going on? So where was the problem? What were they doing wrong? I, I'm blessed because I, I have my parents uh, that live really close in Farmington. Um, and so what I try to do is I try to visit them uh, at least uh, once a week. I try to go over there and I usually go after work um, and I'm really tired, I'm, I'm really grumpy. And so it's home, right? Though mom loves me, dad loves me, you know. I go home and uh, I'm there and, you know, I sit down, plop down on the sofa and I'm just exhausted and mom, you know, comes up to me and she says, hey, how was your day? I'm like, eh, you know, it was all right, mom. And then the next question never fails because she knows me. She goes, did you eat something? See, because I, I suffer from a, a disease called hangry. <laughs> when you're hangry, nothing is good. I don't care. I, and nothing is good until you get something. Everything is negative. Everything is horrible. And once you eat something magically, it just every just life gets really good again, right? Nothing is good, nothing is pleasant, everything's bad. It's really similar to what some refer to as a man cold. I don't know how many ladies know what a man cold is. Um, 
when men convert to babies. Anyways, um, so <laughs> grumbling, being hangry, or th this, in this case right here, in, in the scripture, in the words that we're discussing, in the situation that's happening, grumbling in this case is actually dissatisfaction in God's will and where he had placed Israel. See, when God's people were complaining, what they were doing is they were challenging God. They were challenging his wisdom, his goodness, his grace, his love. This grumbling was hostile and it was rebellious. And suddenly there's this shift occurring here, right? Because before what it was, was it was, a, it was God versus Egypt because he said, let my people go, right? That was the command of God. And so there's this war happening and God, obviously God's going to win. But it, I mean, the, the Egyptians, they thought they were better and they fought. So it was God versus the Egyptians. But suddenly something's changing here. Suddenly it's the people of God versus God himself. And any opposition to God's will is called sin. And this story is a depiction of the Christian life. I mean, it's pretty accurate. I don't know how many of you are new believers here today, but if you're a new believer, and I do not mean to burst your bubble in any way, I just think you need to know it's going to get difficult at times, right? When you become a Christian, it doesn't mean life is just perfect. It does mean you have a Savior. It does mean you have strength. It does mean you have uh, love and, and, and you have God. What else do you want? But it's still going to get difficult at times. There's going to be trials in John 16, 33, right? It, Jesus tells his disciples, in this world you will have tribulation, right? I mean, and I know he's talking more about persecution and, and, and I understand that, but he also understands that there's trouble. There's going to be problems in this world. There's going to be suffering, famine. There's going to be times where there's no water. And what ends up happening with Christians sometimes is they get in this cycle where they're complaining, they're moaning, then they get happy again and they start singing and they're worshiping and then something bad happens and then they start grumbling and complaining again and then they get happy again. And it's just like this cycle, right, where you're just complaining and then you're happy and you're complaining and you're happy you get stuck but scripture warns us as the people of God as it tells us in Ephesians 4 31 it tells us it says get rid of all bitterness rage and anger brawling and slander along with every form of malice the Christian is never to be bitter is not to be grumbling in the circumstances of life I know it's not it's, it, it's impossible in ourselves, right? And, and that's what happens is we're humans. It, it's because we're far away from God. But if we're living in God's ways, in, in the spirit of God, it's possible. It is attainable in all situations. You choose your attitude when, you, when you're lacking or you're needing something. If you're thankful in that situation despite lacking and needing something, it's because you choose to be thankful. If you're ungrateful and complaining, guess what? You chose to be ungrateful and complaining. Romans 12, 12 tells us to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. And see, everybody wants to believe that they have a good reason for being grumpy, for being mad, right? Me? It's because I'm hungry. Um, but everybody thinks that they have a really good reason, a good excuse... They say, let me tell you, wait, 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 you don't know, brother. You don't know my story. You don't know what I'm going through. Let me tell you what happened to me. And listening to you, I can say, yeah, absolutely. You know what? I get it. I understand. I would get because that would make me grumpy too. It would make me mad. But just because I can understand that, just because we get it, doesn't give us an excuse to be that way, right? It doesn't give us an excuse to act bitter and grumpy and be upset. When life is hard for you, Christian, you don't need sympathy. You need strength. How many of us are thirsty this morning? How many of us have had loss or difficult circumstances and we're still mad at God about it? I mean, we're here, but we're angry. We're, we're, we got this resentment in our hearts that's just sitting there and we're mad with God about it. Maybe you're living in it right now in this moment. You're refusing to move on from Mara because you think God has cheated you or because he's failed you. And although our situation, and, and I, I know there's a lot of situations in this room right now, uh, but although you might be interrupted, your, your life might be inconvenient right now, you might even be bitter, that water that springs out of your life does not have to be because of Christian, because of Jesus, because of the cross. Uh, now what comes out of us is not bitterness, but it is life. 
That anxiety, that worry, that unrest building up inside of you doesn't have to result in hopelessness. It doesn't have to result in despair. During our time historically, right now, in our generation, beloved, I hope that you understand you exist in this time, in this place, in this community, right now, because God has placed you here and you have a job to do. We forget that sometimes. Because we're just... Nah. Right? When we complain, we dishonor God. But when we are content, this glorifies Him. So why did God do this? Why did He lead them here? I want to go to verse 25, Exodus 15, 25. It says, Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it in the water, and the water became fit to drink. There the Lord issued a ruling and instruction for them and put them to the test. See, see the why lies in the timing of this event. Okay? Because you have this great victory of the Red Sea, what we just talked about, right? And then in the future, what's coming? There's going to be a battle with the Malachites. Huge battle. Scary people. Scary guys. And so before that happens, there's actually three little struggles, like the Morrow one, that's the first one, and there's, there's more that are coming. There's going to be three struggles that, are com- that, that, that happen in order for there to be some change. Something has to change between uh, the Red Sea and, and the time they meet the Amalekites. And if you remember the Amalekites, I don't know if I need to refresh you, it, and I'm always thinking of Bible stories and back to childhood and stuff, but it's when Moses, right, had the staff, and he's holding it up, and while Moses had his hands up, that's when the Israelites were winning the battle, but as soon as he lowered them down, then they'd start losing. And so then Aaron, right? And then uh, her, uh, not a her, but her, H-U-R, uh, came in and, and helped uh, hold up Moses' arms as well. And, and that's how that, and, and, but to get to that point, there had to be many struggles. There had to be opportunity for God to work and to reveal himself. See, this trial, this struggle, this bitter water they're going through is preparing them for something that is coming. And so God in His wisdom subjects them to difficulty in order to show them their lack of faith. And He's calling into question whether they're willing to follow His guidance and His leading. But you see, God doesn't need proving. But humans do. And when we go through bitter water moments through testing, what this does is this struggle, it reveals things in us. Struggles reveal our character and our relationship to God. See, we, we all think we have faith, right? I mean, we just, we, we, we sing about it. We talk about, oh, I have so much faith. But when it gets hard, when you get tomorrow, that's when you see your faith. That's how you know if you have a deficiency of it. Struggle also revealed to us that God works on His timing and not on ours. He doesn't do what we say. We do what God says through the trial. He works and we maneuver by His guidance through the trial until He acts to save. Struggles also reveal our dependence on God. Struggle reveals how much we need Him. And so God brings his own down tomorrow to make them useful later. Israel needed God. They didn't need human guidance or innovation. And in times of bitterness, in times of trial, we don't need men. We need God. We don't need human guidance and human innovation. Although God uses that, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't go to the doctor because God's provision is a doctor, right? So that's silly not to do that. But I'm not trusting in human hands, in human ingenuity, in human wisdom. I'm trusting God in that moment because God is the only one that can save. And even as godly of a leader as Moses was, he was still just a man. And Moses knew that. He said, I am just a man. I can't save Israel. So what did he do? He turned to someone who could save Israel. And so Moses cried out to the Lord and God provided a piece of wood to filter that bitterness and make the water fit to drink. But remember that the miracle was not the wood. The miracle uh, happened after Moses recognized his need for God and God showing Moses what to do. The miracle came because Moses uh, exercised faith and obedience. 
during times of intense suffering, we might think we, not, we, we need answers. We, we, we need justice, right? I, I need revenge. I need to get paid back for something. I need to get paid back for God. God owes me. God took it away, so God owes me something. We don't. He doesn't. We need a fulfillment of God's purposes through the trial and the struggle. Why? So He can get the glory. More than healing, and we need healing, beloved. Don't get me wrong. But more than healing, we need grace. Titus 2.11 says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. We need the gospel. Because for the Christian, that piece of wood was the cross, that, that wood where our Savior was crucified, where the Lamb of God took on sin and suffering uh, of our lives so that we can enjoy sweet water once again, so that we can enjoy sweet life, abundant life. Charles Spurgeon says, God has provided remedies for all ills, sweetening trees for bitter waters, and the cross to sweeten them all. Maybe you've been mistreated. Maybe you've been robbed. Maybe you've suffered some kind of injustice. Well, so was Jesus. So was Christ. He understands. He gets what it means to be wrong. And so that's why he went to the cross to change all that sin has tainted. That brokenness, that bitterness. Jesus changes it into sweet water once again. One of the, the most beautiful things that, that I enjoy, at least personally, is, is seeing a full moon. I don't know of you guys, but I love a full moon, right? Uh, and and the, when there's a full moon, I mean, it's dark outside, but you can still see, especially if you're away from the light pollution, like in the mountains in Colorado or, you know, wherever, just somewhere far away. Um, but but it's, it's, it's cool because you can still see. You can still see in the dark. It's like everything's kind of got this glow. It's like this cool little uh, Snapchat filter, Instagram filter, right? It's just everything's got like this, this hue about it. And you can see there's light. Light is coming. But that light is not produced by the moon. You know that, right? I'm sorry, Miss Science. I don't know. Anyways, it's not. It's 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 the sun that is producing that light. It's the moon that is reflecting it, and just like the moon reflects the light of the sun, guess what happens to a Christian in the darkness? If he's really a Christian, the light of the sun reflects on the Christian, and we can see. Our Mara can be used to reveal light. The trial, the lack of something essential can be used to show us God. And so Christian, in times of testing, don't get distracted. Don't get discouraged. Hold fast to Jesus. Because God's grace is at work now, not just in the past and not just in the future. You know what? Sometimes we get in that where we're, we're, we're thinking our salvation, all it is is just fire insurance, right? Or insurance for the future. It's like, well, you know, I'm suffering and I have a miserable life, but someday I'm going to be in glory. Jesus offers abundant life today, right now, brother. You can be going through some um, horrible things and still have contentment and still have joy. And so it's not just far off in the future. It's now, today, right now, in this moment. It's just some of us, are, we're doing it wrong, right? We're distracted. God's grace is at work now. Through the sickness, the loss, the hurt. It's when we don't have the ability to endure and overcome. It's, it's when, we, when we're ending and we can't in that anguish when you're just like, God, Jesus, I can't, Lord. This is beyond me. This is beyond my strength. I can't do it. I can't get up. I can't stop thinking. I can't sleep. I'm so anxious. I'm so worried. And God says, good. Shut up. Be still and know I am the Lord. Weakness in us displays the goodness and the power of God visibly. Hasn't God been good and faithful all these years, beloved? Those times where we believed we weren't going to make it, those times in our life where we're just like, I can't, I can't. But man, we're standing here, we're alive. We're singing. We're gathered together. God has been good. This journey through the wilderness 
was always about knowing God. This God of angel armies, this God showing up in their lives through struggles and testimony and revealing himself. And guess what? It's still true today. It still happens to us today. It's for us as well that we might know him. So what are we to do if we run into these bitter water situations? Let's, let's go to verse 26a, Exodus 15, 26a, the first part of that. It says, he said, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and you do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees. So in the face of trial, of bitter water, what are we to do? What should our response be? To stop, to listen to do, to pay attention and keep all his decrees, to worship him in the highs and lows of life. We need to praise God when we come tomorrow. Psalm 68, 19 through 20 says, Praise be to the Lord, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. Our God is a God who saves. From the sovereign Lord comes escape from death. Praise him genuinely from your heart. Like I was saying earlier, not just vain words of repetition, not just a bunch of noise, but a welling up of awe and adoration that comes from knowing and understanding and experiencing God deep within your heart. It's not so much about how loud you're singing, beloved. It's about what's happening in your heart. Connecting to God. And when that happens, it it just, it, it leads to an outburst of praise and you can't contain it. And it's not because our life is good. It's not because life is awesome. But it's because God is. We have an eternal relationship, security, because our God is the living God, the almighty creator, our savior. And so we praise him in the storm. We're called to trust him. In Isaiah 26, 3 through 4, it says, you keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. Trust him. Don't trust those Egyptians, those masters you once served. We're free. We're no longer slaves. Why do we suffer from spiritual depression? Why do sometimes Christians just suffer uh, from this disease of spiritual depression? Sometimes it's because we're listening to Facebook, because we're listening to the media, and we're letting them tell us what's true, what's real, We're not letting the word of God speak into our hearts. We're not feeding off the spirit. Man, it's no wonder then. It's no wonder that you run into people, Christians, that are downcast, that are anxious, that are edgy, that have short fuses because we let the world steal our peace. We've let Satan come into our lives and speak lies into us. And we are supposed to trust God in every circumstance because God sees us and he knows what we're going through. He's aware, he's present, and he's in control. This is more than songs, beloved. This is taking your thoughts captive and forcing them and saying, look, My heart, my downcast heart, my spirit. Look, look who God is. Look what God says. And you know what the most awesome thing is about it is this never changes. This is true and forever will be true till the end of time because it is God. It is God's voice. My voice might change. Your voice might change. Who you listen to might change. This never will, beloved. This is the word of God. It's eternal. And it's so good to know and hold on to that truth that he's unshakable. He's an eternal rock, right? We're called to obey in 1 John 3, 21 through 22. 1 John 3, 21 through 22 says, Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and we do what pleases him. Christian, obey him. When you come tomorrow, obey him. God isn't looking for another song from Israel. He, he's not looking for, for uh, vocal worship from Israel. He doesn't want them to sing louder. What he wants is he wants uh, that confidence, that faith that they claim to possess to be displayed in obedient service to him and to one another. See, we sing about God being a way maker, a promise keeper, but how are we living that out? Because if it just stays in here, if it just stays in this room, the moment you leave the parking lot drive, if, if, this, if, if way maker stays in this room, we got problems. 
We need to submit to his calling to love our neighbors and to go however we can and engage our community with the hope of Jesus. Seek out how he would have us walk through this trial and this time, how we can be obedient despite the struggle, despite the bitterness. If we do what he says, it tells us in verse 26b, Exodus 15, 26b says, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Why did the Egyptians suffer plagues? Why were they destroyed? Because they opposed God. They refused to submit and kneel down to the one true God. They shook their fists at him. They said, you know what? We got chariots. We got horses. We got arrows. We got swords. We got armor. We're going to take you out. And what did God do? He buried him in the sea. I wonder if some of us are living the same way. Because if we are, we will suffer the consequences of sin in our lives. The only hope you have is in God the healer. Because, because of bitter water, the Israelites learned this great truth. They learned that God is the healer. He did it to the water and he was going to do it to their hearts too. And praise God, he still does it today. But unfortunately, not all of them got that point. Not all of them understood that. 1 Corinthians 10.10 10 says, And do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of ages has come. Thousands of years later, this is talking to the early church, thousands of years later, you had Christians in that time still grumbling, still complaining, still looking at their circumstances and just getting downcast and just, just you know, forgetting who God was, forgetting that God was the healer. But not today though, right? Not in our church. Nobody here. We're all good, right? You guys know. This morning, I hope that you hear that. That you hear this warning, this command. In verse 27, it says, Then they came to Elam, where there were 12 springs and 70 palm trees, and they camped there near the water. If Israel would have just waited if they would have just been patient, if they would have just turned to the Lord not too far ahead, there was water, there was shade, and there was rest. The Israelites needed to remember, remember that God was healer, that this situation was not their home. These trials and circumstances weren't where they were headed. It wasn't what God wanted for them. It was all temporary. Man, so why waste time grumbling? Why complain? Why moan? And we need to remember. I, like I said earlier, I understand I get it. I get it. It's hard. I understand it's worrisome. You get anxious. It's scary. I know. I live in it too. But the way some of us walk around, we've forgotten that God is the healer. Right? We sing about it. Let's start living like it, Christians. And we do that by continuing to carry on his mission of spreading hope and growing not just us, not just our faith, not just growing to, for us to know closer to God, but also his kingdom as well. And you need to remember that once this trial passes, there will come another. We're going to continue to be bombarded because this world is not our home, right? There's going to be brokenness. And so we need to prepare, we need to grow through all of these trials. And we need to remember that we can have life in abundance now and a hope for tomorrow. And so we cry out in this time, asking God to take the water, this bitter water, and make it fit to drink again. And God is responding by telling us, be obedient, take the gospel, place it in the water, place it in your home, place it in the community, and prepare for a miracle. He's commanding us to go out to our world, spread the gospel, and watch it change the water. God is not near in times of struggle or trial. God is right where he's always been. It's just we're more aware of him when we have trials and struggle, when our dependence and our strength fails. And if we're grumbling and complaining, it might be because we're far from the presence of God. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up at this time. Psalms 23, 6 says, Surely your goodness and love 
will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We often talk about following the Lord, right? But you know what? God follows us. His love and His goodness pursue us. They follow us. And they continue to follow us to this day. We couldn't get to Him, so He came to us. And this verse speaks to hope in this moment and hope in the future. It's an expression of the promise of provision and presence we experience as His people and as His children. And we're going to enter our response time now. And I don't know you. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what God's telling you, what He's spoken to you. I can say this though, don't ignore it. If God is doing something in your heart, in your mind, if He's speaking something to you, listen. Wrestle with it. Deal with it. It's not going to go away. Don't be like that rich young ruler who knew what he needed to do and he turned his back and he walked away from Jesus. Don't do that this morning. Let's bow our heads. This morning, if you need Jesus, like I said, I don't know you. Maybe you've been running into bitter water in your life. Maybe your heart is just, man, it's just dried up. Your spirit, you need something. Because the stuff of the world is not working for you. You need Jesus. You need Jesus to come into your life. To sweeten that water in your soul and your heart. Make it new again. Make it a live beating. This morning, if you need to come, that's the decision you need to make. In just a minute, we'll give you the opportunity to do that. And Christian, I don't know what's going on in your life, but you might be bitter. Maybe there's something that's going on in your life that you've been blaming God for. Maybe there's something you've lost that you blame God for. Maybe there's something that you're losing. Maybe there's something that you need that you just, you just haven't found. And you blame God. You've been bitter. You need to repent because you've forgotten that God is a God who heals. Sometimes when that happens, what we tend to do is we, we walk away from the church. We walk away from, from our quiet time, from spending time with Him try to run away from God, which is silly. You don't need to do that. If you're mad, ask God to soften your heart. Ask Him to come into your life. Reveal what you need to repent from. Our God is a God who heals. Let's pray. Father God, I just, I praise you. And I thank you for this time. I thank you for your word that has gone out and has spoken, Father. I thank you for the truths that have been revealed today, Lord. I just, I, 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 I praise you, Father, because I know that you are a God who heals. And Father, I come before anybody else understanding and realizing that I forget sometimes. I let the bitter water distract me from my journey, from my faith walk. And I plant myself in Mara. And I stay there, upset, grumbling, bitter. Father, and that dishonors you. Forgive me for my sin. And I ask, Lord, that you remind me in all circumstances, in all times, in all situations, how to be content, how to be joyful. Because you are my Savior. Because you came into my life. Because you made all things new and you continue to do that. No matter what's happening around me, that's true. You are good. You are faithful. No matter what, it's true. Father, and I would just ask that you would reveal and work and do and move in this time, this moment, as folks are thinking, sitting there thinking, Father, if they need to come to you, if they need to start a relationship with you, if they know they don't have one and they need to learn how to begin one, Father, I ask that you would do that, Lord, that you just work in them. I would ask if there's somebody here that's bitter, that's angry, that needs to repent, that has some, something that they need to deal with, something they need to wrestle with, that they would come and they would handle business with you, Father, and they might leave change transformed never to be the same again, Father. We, we're asking for you to move in this time. Thank you for what you're going to do. I ask all this in Jesus' name. You'll stand. We're going to, in our, our invitation time, if you need to come, come. You're not coming to me. 
I'm right here with you. I need Jesus just as badly, as urgently, as, as desperately as you do. And so I'm going to be here. If you need to come, come. Don't hesitate. Jesus is waiting. If you need to have somebody come with you, bring them with you. If you see somebody here you know and you see them praying, pray with them, brother. Love them well. But come. The altar is open. Come. As we see. coming this morning. Thank you for being here. Uh, I've been blessed. I've been blessed by your presence. I've been blessed by your voices. Thank you for ministering to me. I I mean that. Thank you. And uh, I just hope that this week, as you go, that you would share that hope that is within you, with your community, with your family, work, school, wherever it is you go. You would just share that light, speak up, say something, because this world needs it. We need Jesus. And you know Jesus, and so you need to share it. Thank you. God bless you.